Hello. And welcome. It's, it's the, the Graveyard, Graveyard Girls. Girls. A true crime and mysteries podcast. <laughs> well done. So used to uh, the witch trials that I I'm know, forgetting. I know, it's confusing. But now we are officially out of the witch trial I season. Know. It's still available though if you want to go back and have a little look to anyone that hasn't already listened. It's all on Patreon. Yes. But it's also... We have a few episodes, so it'll be nine of the episodes are available on our free streaming. Yeah. Um, wherever you want to get your podcast from. It's mainly Apple and Spotify, but we've got Google and Amazon Music, uh, Pocket and, Cast. Yeah, Pocket Cast. Was there another one? I can't remember. I can't remember. You should be able to find us wherever you listen. Yeah. You can also listen to our podcast on our own website, yes. which is thegraveyardgirls.co.uk. Yes. And yeah, if anyone that's still the one leave a bit of feedback back about the witch trials or any of our episodes mm-hmm. that you do, then you can contact us through our email, which yep. is... Uh, thegraveyardgirlspod at gmail.com. Yeah. So you can either obviously go on your email and send it straight for that way, or if you actually go onto our Instagram page, there's a little button that presses email on, so you don't even need to type it in. It'll just automatically send it to us. Yeah, and because our podcast is still quite new, if you could recommend us to family or friends. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. And all, yeah, and like you said, leave reviews on wherever you listen. That will... Yeah, the more reviews and ratings we get, the more that helps us out. It gets us noticed a bit more. Yeah. Because um, while it goes quite like, it's brilliant that people are listening, but if we also don't get the ratings and reviews, it doesn't push us up anywhere. Um, so we do need that little bit of a boost because we're not in the position to be able to pay financially for extra advertising um, so that we can reach tens of... We could reach tens of thousands if we pay immediately. And unfortunately, we haven't got that. So we're doing well for no advertising. Mm. Bar we're doing the very advertising well. we're doing ourselves, yep. yeah. Um, but yeah, if any way in which people could help us is very much appreciated. And those listeners that keep coming back every week, thank you. Yes, thank you. And those that have shared stuff for us yes. is a massive help. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, I'll uh, let you get into it. So, what have you got for me today? So, as Halloween is coming up, yeah, I th- I wanted to do a true crime case linked to Halloween. Ooh. So now, over here in the UK, we don't really have the warnings of like poison, candy, or the dangers no. of Halloween. I don't think we've ever really had that here. I think it's no. I mean, to be fair, it's only really been the for me like Halloween was obviously a thing when I was a child, but I don't remember it being that big of a thing do you know what i mean like we did do tri- well i never really went trick-or-treating it wasn't much did unless i went to other mates and we had a party mm. but i don't remember it, it being as big when i was a child as it is now and i don't know if it's a case of over here we just didn't really have the merchandise do you know what i mean or it was basically everyone I, was the same <laughs> i think i did it a few times when i was a kid but i don't think it was like as commercialized as it is now no. just like you said there's not as much merch and not like you go anywhere now, especially this time of year, we've got the Americanization of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same like the things like the Black Friday. We never really used to have that. And that's no. a thing here now, which is just weird. Which is weird because we don't have Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's usually the Friday after and Thanksgiving. Like Cyber Monday and all yeah. that weird shit. Oh, yeah. I think we just we've sort of adopted all those things. But is that because American companies have come over here? I think so. So, yeah. I don't know. It's like that's the leader of the free world, apparently. So we've got to. <laughs> which seems one of the least free places <laughs> mm. well it depends who you are yeah so obviously we don't have that like the states do every year yeah. so is it because of an urban legend or was has poison candy ever been given out mm. so i'm going to quote an article written by erin blakemore on history.com so many if not most reports of halloween sadism are of questionable authenticity mm right sociologist criminal justice experts joel best and gerald t haruchi when they conducted an ex- extensive uh, study on so-called halloween sadism or crimes specifically committed using halloween treats or customs they concluded that the threat is greatly exaggerated though both parents and kids are taught to be alert for tampered with sweets most of the cases that uh, researchers researchers analysed were either overstated or could not be linked to Halloween itself. Right, okay. Best and Haruchi suggested that fears of Halloween sadism rise during fearful times. For example, paranoid, paranoia with about tainted candy spiked in the early 1980s after a rash of ty- Tylenol poisonings in which cyanide-laced Tylenol was placed on store shelves and sold. 
The high-profile crime led to the induction of child-proof containers and saw federal laws aimed at punishing those who tampered with drugs. After the Tylenol murders, which are still unsolved, warnings about adulterated Halloween candy increased. While the fears may be overblown, Halloween crimes involving poisoned have occurred. In 1964, for example, a New York woman named Helen File was arrested for handing out things like ant poison and do- dog biscuits to kids. Oh, is that just because she didn't like children? When questioned, <laughs> the housewife said that she was joking and that she gave the items to kids she felt were too old to be trick or treating. Though no children were poisoned during the incident, law enforcement did not find her actions funny. I mean, I can kind of get it. What, you giving out the um, yeah. poison? I'll just give it to the, you know, the really annoying kids. Like the extra annoying ones or the really snotty ones. You know, like if you saw them coming down the street, like, I want this and I want that, I'd be like, you're a knobhead. Poison your sweets. <laughs> and the I rest think... of them will give like, no, if, like, you know, like nice, polite children. Yeah. Like they can have proper sweets. Yeah. I think she was giving them out to, I'm assuming, teenagers. Mm. But then again, what if teenagers aren't as smart as you realise and they might accidentally take the thing you've given them? That's I felt. <laughs> Maybe she shouldn't be um, giving out poison. The dog biscuits, I get, that would be kind of funny. Yeah. Plus also, how did the kids not know? Yeah, I think that's why no, no one died. Oh, okay. So this brings me on to today's case. Okay. So on October 31st, 1974, children were out trick-or-treating in Pasadena, Texas. And a optician by the name of ronald o'brien took his son timothy and daughter elizabeth trick-or-treating along with a neighbor and his two children after visiting a home where the occupant failed to answer the door the children grew impatient and ran ahead to the next home while ronald stayed behind he eventually caught up with the group and produced five 21 inch pixie sticks okay are they just like candy canes no you know those um tubes filled with like Dust. That some, oh, like sherbet. Yeah, that some people may have snorted. Oh, okay. <laughs> some kids did snort them up to like pretend that they're drugs. Really? Oh, I never yeah. did that. Yeah. I say that, but then we had those little sweets, you know, the ones that were pretend cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love them. <laughs> so they take the paper off. Sometimes you just leave the paper on and then just yeah. eat it. So yeah, these are the giant twenty-one inch right, okay. pixie sticks. Which he said he got from the home who wouldn't answer the door before. Hmm. He gave I'm already a bit suspicious. Eh? <laughs> he gave one each to all the children in the group, and while out, he saw a ten-year-old boy he recognised from the church he was a deacon at, oh, and he gave him oh, the remaining. He's a religious one as well. <laughs> he yes, he gave him the remaining pixie stick. As was it, as it was raining, the group only went trick or treating on their two small streets. Right. Okay. So before bed, Timothy asked to eat some of his, the candy collected, and he apparently chose the pixie stick. Oh, okay. Timothy had trouble getting the powdered candy out of the straw, so Ronald helped him loosen the powder. After tasting the candy, uh, Timothy complained that it tasted bitter. Ronald gave his son Kool-Aid to wash away the taste. Timothy immediately began to complain that his stomach hurt, and he ran to the bathroom where he began vomiting and convulsing. We must have had the witch trials. <laughs> I we ended those. Ronald, <laughs> Ronald held Timothy while he was vomiting and the child went limp in his arms. Timothy O'Brien died en route to the hospital less than an hour after consuming the candy. So that's his own child? He was oh. only eight years old, yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Timothy's death from poison Halloween candy raised fear in the community. Numerous parents in the Deer Park area and the surrounding area turned in their candy, turning candy their children had got from trick or treating to the police, fearing it was laced with poison. Ronald initially told the police he could not remember which house he got the pixie sticks from. Police began became suspicious because O'Brien and his neighbour had only taken the children home on the two streets because of the rain. Oh, okay. Their suspicions increased after learning that none of the homes they visited had given out pixie sticks. After walking the neighbourhood with the police three times, Ronald led them to the home where no one had answered the door. He claimed that 
He went back there before catching up with the group. That's weird. He said... It's suspicious in the first place. Yes. He said the owner of the home did not turn the lights on, but he did crack the door open and hand him the five pixie sticks. You don't fucking take his sweets from someone that does that. He he claimed he only saw the man's arm, which he described as hairy. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's definitely this over guy. He's definitely done it. Are, are you sure? I what, think so. What makes, what makes you think that? <laughs> hmm. The home was owned by a man named Courtney Mel- Melvin. Melvin was an air traffic controller at William P. Hobby Airport, and he did not get home from work until 11 p.m. on Halloween night. So, so he couldn't have done it. Yes. So police ruled him out as a suspect when over 200 people confirmed that he had been at work. So where did he get the pixie sticks from? Hmm. The police did not initially suspect... Uh, Ronald of any wrongdoing until Timothy's autopsy revealed that the pixie sticks he had consumed were laced with a, fent- with a fatal dose of potassium cyanide. Right, okay. Four of the five pixie sticks Ronald claimed to have received were recovered by authorities from the other children, none of whom had consumed the candy. Oh, so that were lucky. Yes, the parents of the fifth child became hysterical when they could not locate the candy after being notified by the police. I mean, you would be shitting your pants, wouldn't you? Yes. The parents rushed upstairs to find their son asleep holding the unconsumed candy. Oh, bloody hell. Yes. The, the boy had been unable to open the staples that sealed the wrapper shut. So, I'm trying to think. They don't... This is obviously a so few... So, it had to be an open frame to be able to put the sign sta- in. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm trying to think. When I used to have them, they don't... They aren't stapled. They're kind of like a weird self seals type thing you have to kind of like pop it open like squeeze it open yeah. and then it pops open and then i'm assuming you can't seal them again so that's what i'm thinking with the staples yeah that would make sense yeah all five of the pixie sticks had been opened with the top two inches refilled with cyanide powder and resealed with a staple According to a pathologist who tested the pixie stick, the candy consumed by Timothy contained enough cyanide to kill two adults, while the other four candies contained enough to kill three to four adults. Mm, So definitely trying to kill someone, I think. As their investigation progressed, police learned that Ronald was over $100,000 in debt, and that is equivalent to $550,000 thousand pounds in today's money but how is killing the children going to help that i will get into that (laughs) he had a history of unable to hold down a job at the time of his arrest he was suspected of theft at his job at texas state optical and was close to being fired his car was about to be repossessed he had defaulted on several bank loans and the family home had been foreclosed on police discovered that Ronald had taken out life insurance policies on his children in the oh. months preceding Timothy's death. But then why also give it to the other people's children? So it doesn't look suspicious. Yeah, but will you <clears> just <throat> lay some of them with cyanide and but you know those ones haven't got staples in, so you give the ones with no staples to the other people's kids and just kill your own off. Yeah, but then once you test it's gotta be in there. You've either gotta kill all these kids so it doesn't look suspicious and narrow down your kids. But also the kids well, I'll say I know they can't if they've died, but they'll just go, Well, we only got the candy from him we got it from him. I don't see how he thinks he was gonna get away with it. This is the thing. Murderers think they're smarter than what they are. Because all I'd do is like if I obviously like, I was one of the surviving kids would be like, No, I didn't get it from any house. His dad gave it to me. Tim Timothy's dad gave it to me. Yeah, but he's already put it in your head that he got it from a house that wouldn't open the door. Yeah, but then if the police asked me, even yeah, if the charge they go, who actually gave it to you? I'd go, Timothy's dad. Yeah. Yes, I know. It's not, it, and if it's they not go, smart. why didn't you get it from a house? Go, well, the person didn't answer the door. Yeah, I know. It... He's not done a very good way of hiding it. Like, to me, it was like, it was too obvious. It is as too obvious. As soon as you said it, I was like, yeah. well, he's definitely poisoned. I want to know where this is going. Yeah, of course. But I, I don't know. It's just, like I said, I get it killing your own children, well, not for that I get it killing your own children, but then to do it to someone else's children, there's an excellent, especially if it's to get yourself out mm-hmm, of debt. Mm-hmm. Well, he, if he's at the stage where he's willing to kill his own children, I think other people's children are just collateral. He doesn't mm-hmm. care about them either, mm, okay, which yeah, isn't great, but 
like he thinks he's smarter than what he is which isn't which isn't great so what's he home for death penalty so he doesn't have to pay the bills i'm confused because surely even if the kids if he got the life insurance policy on the kids it might clear his debt but then he still might not have a job so how is he planning on going forward with the money i don't i don't get it i think he assumed he wouldn't get caught because he's so smart oh, okay yeah <laughs> So in January 1974, he had taken out a £10,000 life insurance policy on both his children, and that's equivalent to £54,000 in today's money. One month before Timothy's death, Ronald took out an additional $20,000 policy on both children despite the objects of his life insurance agency. In the days preceding Timothy's death, Ronald had taken out yet another 20,000 policy on each child. The various policies totaled approximately $60,000. Which is nowhere near his original debt. No. Um, Ronald's wife maintained that she did not know about the insurance policies on her children's lives. Police also learned that on the morning of after Timothy's death, Ronald had called his insurance company to inquire about collecting the policies he had taken out on his son. After learning that Ronald had visited a chemical supply store in Houston to buy cyanide shortly before Halloween 1974, but he left without buying it, police began to suspect that Ronald had laced the candies with poison in an effort to kill his children and collect on their life insurance policies, which, you know, is a bit obvious at this point. Also, it's quite unusual. You always hear people having life insurance policies, but it's normally spouses. I've Mm -hmm. never heard of children before. I know, I know. like, Like... insurance policies out on children here because i don't ever hear of it yeah because i no thought you have adverts, yeah i thought you have them in case you die so your kids are taken care of yeah. not you get taken care of after your kids being killed that's what i'm saying because it's not like the kids no. are providing you with an income no it's weird i don't get it very strange yeah what are they what is the money for <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't know that doesn't make any sense no it doesn't because like you said, if your spouse dies, you might, like, I don't know, if you got, like, a joint mortgage, you wouldn't be able to pay it or whatever. Mm. And then say, like, you had children on top to pay for, you've also got a loss of income, so the money that you get is to help cover that. Mm. But what money is the child bringing? I don't I know. I don't know what the insurance is for. I don't get it. I understand, like, if the child's ill and you need that insurance to pay for their medical bill oh, so maybe that's maybe you do only get it in america then yeah maybe that's why we haven't heard of it here maybe because yeah we have the nhs where which that provides, would make sense yeah. actually to be fair wouldn't it yeah so you it, it, yeah get it's that. probably medical hasn't it yeah that's what i'm thinking so he believed they believed he gave the other children poison candy in an effort to cover up his crime police repeatedly questioned um ronald about but he maintained his innocence do you know Hmm. why do you have all these insurance policies on your children although police never discovered when or where ronald bought the poison he was arrested for timothy's murder on the november 5th 1974 he was indicated on one count of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder ronald entered a plea of not guilty to all five accounts his trial began in Houston on May 5th, 1975. During a trial, a chemist who was acquainted with Ronald testified that in the summer of 1973, Ronald contacted him asking him about cyanide and how much would be fatal. So this is like a year oh. before he even d- oh, yeah, did so it. Plotting it for a while. Been plotting it yeah, for a while. That's what you want to believe, which I think he was. Yes. A chemical supply salesman also testified that Ronald had asked him how to purchase cyanide. Friends and co-workers testified that in the months before Timothy's death, Ronald showed an unusual interest in cyanide and spoke about how much it would take to kill a person. I'm sorry. (laughs) All these people are testifying at the time. Did no one get suspicious before? Like, you know, before it happened, did Mm. no one think, he's asking that? lot strange amount of questions about cyanide like do they not think they should contact someone about it yeah i don't know some people do get obsessed with some things and you're like why are you suddenly into that but he's not done anything yet so you can't really Mm. say this is weird until after the fact but even these ones selling like the stuff if you know someone kept asking strange questions about it i'll be like yeah i'm not selling this arm to you 
But yeah. I'm scared you're going to use it to kill someone. Yeah, because it's like, do you know how much I could kill... How much cyanide it takes to not, kill you. You know, if your wedding goes, oh, I want it, it's like pest control in the olden yeah. days, you go like, oh, that's normal. But if it's yeah. how much would kill a person, I'd be all of a sudden be like, yeah, I'm not selling this product to you. This is why we can um, Google stuff and it not be weird unless... <laughs> yeah, then they're looking at your search history. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was for a case, okay? Yeah, yeah I to be know. fair, if I look at some of the things I've Googled, I, know. This, I do look a bit suspicious. <laughs> I know, yeah. There's probably a flag somewhere, you know, like in some like MI- MI5 things where they're like watching what we search. Mine probably like flags up on a daily basis. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Like, but you could write it off as like, like I said, people do become obsessed with yeah. their own little niche. And you can't really like say anything that's, it's weird, but he's not doing anything with it yet. Yeah. It's just mm. like, oh, I'm innocent. I've been planning this for a year. It's like, okay. mm. <laughs> You can't, it's one or the other, you can't be both. Yeah. So, um, his own sister-in-law and brother-in-law testified that on the day of Timothy's funeral, he spoke of using the money from Timothy's life insurance policy to take a long vacation and buy other items. What? So it's like... I thought you had debt. <laughs> he's so distraught. You know, I don't know. I'm very confused. Mm, I think... Is that a front? Or he's just, this is why he's in debt. He gets money. He thinks he should pay his debt off, but that's not what it's for. He's going to yeah. be doing something else, and then it just contributes more to his debt, mm, doesn't okay. it? Silly man. Why doesn't he just pray to God for more money? Mm. Or can't he nick a few church things? <laughs> 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 that would be worth worth a bit, won't that? Maybe. So on the st- church leg, on that note, wouldn't that have just been easier than bumping your kid off? probably but then it's probably i don't know <laughs> maybe he's like morally skewed where it's like you can't steal from the church but you can kill your kid uh, okay. I, d- I don't i don't know the minds of killers are just weird aren't they so as all this evidence of like people coming out and saying all these things his wife rejected the claim that timothy chose to eat the pixie stick the night he died she's saying that he it was forced. Yeah, he was like, oh. "Oh no, you want this pixie stick, don't you? You want because he wants candy, but he's oh. like, you can, you can have the pixie stick, nothing else." And stating that, um, yeah, so she's saying that he forced him to have it. Despite all this, Ronald continued to maintain his innocence. His defense mainly drew upon the decades-old urban legend concerning a mad poisoner who hands out Halloween candy laced with poison or needles. Yes, you're him. <laughs> or candy apples with razor blades inserted. These stories have persisted despite the fact that there are no documented instances of strangers poisoning Halloween candy. The case and subsequent trial garnered national attention and the press dubbed Ronald the Candyman. But yeah, but it's true. It isn't strangers doing it. It's your fucking dad. I know. That's why I was like, oh, I leave the stranger bit in. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, like I said, it's not strangers doing it. It's within the house. Yeah, so it is happening, but it's just, mm-hmm. it's your own family doing mm-hmm. it. And it's like, oh, this never happens before because strangers don't give out mm. candy. No, they don't. I just, mm. I, don't, I don't get how we thought it was going to get away with it in the first place. So on June 3rd, nineteen. 19- 75 a jury took 46 minutes to find ronald guilty of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder Mm -hmm. the jury took 71 minutes to sentence him to death by electrocution (laughs) electrocution 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 thank you shortly after he was convicted his wife filed for divorce and she later remarried and her new husband adopted her daughter elizabeth okay so a little bit of a good thing maybe so ronald's execution date had been pushed four times the third date for his execution was the 31st of october 1982 okay. the eighth year anniversary of his son timothy's murder but the supreme court delayed the date again to give him a chance to appeal to seek a new trial but he didn't on march 31st 1984 shortly after midnight Ronald was executed by lethal injection. During the execution, a crowd of 300 demonstrators Ooh. gathered outside the prison, cheered while some yelled, trick or treat. <laughs> Others showered anti-death penalty demonstrators with candy. So Ronald 
O'Brien is known as the man who killed Halloween or simply the candy man. Mm. So the fear of being poisoned on Halloween is... It is a myth, pretty much. It's a myth. It's just, it basically boxed on a murder. Unless your dad wants to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, I you just, yeah, I don't see how he thought he was going to get away with it. But even that, like, even if you add up the policies, it didn't cover his debt. No. I don't think he wanted to cover his debt. I think he just wanted money. Mm. That's why he's in debt. Oh, yeah, okay. I suppose. But, yeah, no, it's just very strange. And out of all the ways it was, they're not easier ways to kill your kids off. I don't know. Especially when he was... I do understand his wife's point of view, where it's like, he wouldn't have chose Pixie Stick to take... Ronald would have forced him to take it. Yeah. In a way that, like, a dad would be like, you can have one sweet, <laughs> and that one sweet is the Pixie Stick. But, yeah, I don't know. It's very strange. But also, would there not be easier sweets to lace in the side now? You know, like, one's in a wrapper, because you could just wrap it back up. Mm. That would probably be his undoing, was them bloody things, because the staple, it looks suspicious. Yeah. It's suspicious it's, from the start. Well, yeah, but even still, like, I don't know, like a chocolate eclair. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. just unwrap the wrapper and yeah. then wrap the wrapper back up. That's dead easy to do. I don't know. He thought he was smarter than what he is, and then he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get money. I'm going to go on a long holiday. No, you're not. But surely, even if they knew you'd for a holiday, the debt collectors would have just took his money anyway before we had a chance to pay for a holiday. Yeah. Like I said, he could have stole something from the church. Because at first I, I thought you were going to say something like, um, he was doing it almost like a suicide thing to himself because he knew he'd get like the death penalty. And he wouldn't no. have to pay any of his debts off. But No, he thought he'd get away with it. Mm, if it was a suicide... man. If it was a suicide thing, he would have taken the insurance out on himself. Oh, yeah, true. Made it... Yeah, but they don't pay out on suicide. Made it not look like a suicide. Oh, okay. His wife will get the insurance pay off his debts mm, his yeah. children live yeah it's very strange yeah i don't get it so that's the one yeah true halloween crime related case there we go just, just in, in time just, for halloween just in time for halloween <laughs> That'll be so you know yeah don't, don't accept any sweets off your dad on halloween is the moral <laughs> of this story or from and if hairy... he's really persistent He's definitely trying to kill you. <laughs> and if he says he got it from a hairy man or a hairy <laughs> arm, do not take it. It's, it's, it's silly. Like, why would you even think you'd get away with it? Yeah, because like I said, surely you know that they'll just go back to the house and the girl will be like, oh, I wasn't in. And especially as the kids can corroborate the fact that the man didn't answer the door. Or mm-hmm. well, a person didn't answer the door. Mm-hmm. The and then the dad man. suddenly appears with sweets from the door that they couldn't get anything from. I know. It was like, you put it in your kids' bags before you give them the bags. Be like, here you go, here's your trick-or-treating yeah, bag. because, yeah, like, we've, we've given you a start. Like, so you make sure, like, and if they're only questions at late, go, oh, no, we kept some side just in case people didn't get any sweets. We wanted to make sure they at least had some. Mm. But, yeah, like, because especially as well, like, why would the dad linger on behind? Because, like, you imagine if you, like, you knocked on the door and no one answered. Yes, okay, the kids would be eager to get to the next one, but you would be like, oh, uh, yes, you run ahead, children. I'll just wait here to see if the person comes and answers the door. I'll break in. Is... <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's... And then he goes, oh, yes, you ran off too quick. The man did come back. And I'll just be like, okay. You're like, I can see you from here. But yeah. No, it was lucky that the other kids didn't eat mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I but... just... I... Him thinking he's so smart, giving it, was a it stupid, out to yeah, yeah plan from like as soon as she said it, I was like, no, it's <laughs> like, it just yeah, I don't get it. I knew when it said he was a deacon, I was like, yeah, I know <laughs> that's gonna annoy you. <laughs> so, yep. It is, but it does sound a little bit like the witch trials thing. Yeah. Hmm. It's fine to murder your children, not to steal from the church. Yeah, but, you know that's God, and God can get him into heaven, so. But he can steal from his work. Oh, yeah! <laughs> this man makes no so sense. So maybe he had already taken all the golden crosses. Oh, maybe. The thing. Maybe. The church would just He couldn't find the diamonds him. and oh. everything else. No, that's in Vatican. Yeah, it's a bit of a long way. He needed the money to get there to steal them, to bring them back. Mm. That's where he was going on his long vacation. <laughs> that's where he had to pull the kid off. Yeah. I don't know. No, should never sure. murder children, especially your own. Mm. Unless they're complete little shits. 
No. <laughs> or, no if you're going to murder them, at least do a no. good job of it. No. Like, don't make it something so stupid and obvious. Or violent. The poor kid. I don't know, there's worse deaths, isn't there? <laughs> he was poisoned, vomited, convulsed. It's not a nice way to yeah, go. Yeah, but it might have, the convulsion might have, like, made him semi-conscious, like, knocked him out quite quickly. He might be quite unaware. It's better than slowly being tortured, isn't it? He's a child. He shouldn't have to think of these things. He shouldn't be going through them. Well, no, but I'm just saying, out of all of the ways to die, I don't think it was the worst. <sighs> he was murdered by his dad. Is pretty bad. <laughs> but yes, moral of the story here: don't don't accept candy off your dad on Halloween. Okay. Because it's gonna kill you in a really <laughs> stupid way. That's really obvious. Maybe you should question them. And then if they're, like, squirming about it, you'd be like, yeah, definitely knew they're trying to murder me now. Or if your dad has taken a sudden interest in cyanide and how many, how much <laughs> yeah, it takes to kill you. Yeah, people about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so where can I find some? Do so you know how much can kill you? So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just screamingly obvious from the beginning. I know, like, pad it out a little bit. Like, maybe have another interest or appear to have another interest that goes along. You probably did, like, taxidermy and then... <laughs> <laughs> would that make it um... <sighs> an hallucinogenic drug yes that's bad that, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of poisons and hallucinogenics yeah. that would be fine just don't murder kids yeah or like I said if you're going to murder someone do, make sure you do a good job of it like, do a good job of hiding it don't make it really stupid and obvious because you will get caught or if you want to kill someone maybe um Kill yourself in a I don't I probably should say murderers. That. People that have already committed bad crimes. You know the ones where you hear like in prison like prisons where like child murderers have then been like murdered killed. I'm yeah. just like, Yeah, okay, they kinda of deserve that. Yeah. I'm not too bothered about them ones popping the clogs. No, but then it's like, well, that murderer is gonna be murdered by another murderer who then is another murderer. It's just a cycle. It is. But then it's like that's the whole thing of like, you know, with assassins. Mm. But how are they not murderers? Because they're fancy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? I Technically they are murderers. They are. I think it's just who they killed. And maybe the way they did it. I know, but they still killed someone. Because if you're murdered, your standing in society is normal. If you're assassinated, you're either president or ruler or famous i know but technically the assassins are still yeah murderers but they so why don't they get they're sneaky you know like execution is <laughs> yeah. before like lobbing someone's head off they can get in trouble with it yeah if like the peasant chops your head off mm. they're then going to get their head chopped off so what's the difference jobs that's yeah, their job yeah. maybe mm. but then they're not someone i think it just depends on who the person is killed maybe the way they are killed Yeah, but then, like I said, if you if you think the old execution thing that's okay, then why isn't a murderer killing a murderer okay? I'm Googling because it's it. just the same, isn't it? What's the difference? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, if a, you were saying about a cycle, if a murderer kills a murderer, what's the problem? Mm. Because if an executioner can kill a murderer and get away, then it's fine. Why can't a murderer kill a murderer? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Why do they then get convicted again of murder? Because the executioner is not being convicted of murder. I don't get it. What's the difference? According to vocabulary.com, a murder <laughs> is the unjust illegal killing of someone. An assassination is a type of murder in which the victim is someone well known, usually in the world of politics. See, I told you. Yeah, but it's still illegal. Yes, it's so... still illegal, but it's like the victim is someone who's well known. It's still a murder, but assassin just makes it sound like fancy doesn't it because a well-known person has yeah, been murdered they get a, they get protection a lot of time and get away with it so why what's the difference i don't know are you on about a hitman <laughs> <laughs> yeah but do you see what i mean like, and like i said you then look at executioners like why isn't theirs murder execution that's their job that's their role okay but that's fine but okay then why don't if a murderer is going to kill a murderer right say that like, you've got two murderers right the slightly better murderer. <laughs> Why who's don't the, you? <laughs> who's the slightly better murderer? 
the one okay uh you've got a mass murderer that killed and mutilated children they're the bad one yeah then the other one uh killed someone in a crime of passion so they wouldn't have normally otherwise have murdered someone mm. it, it was just the circumstances or i don't know maybe they were a victim of an assault and as a result a person died okay mm-hmm. why don't you make that lesser crime mm. an executioner then they can kill the murderer as it's still murder or they're doing their job <laughs> you see what i mean because if they killed them in prison then they'd be given then another death sentence or well a prison like in life a sentence wouldn't they for killing someone else and it'd be illegal but the executioner can come along and kill them and it's fine hold on my brain is like do you see what i mean i don't understand where do you draw the line it we don't murder people anymore we do in america like lethal injection you're still executing a person yeah so why is that okay but the murderer murdering another murderer isn't do you see what i mean <laughs> some I don't know. So why not just let the ones that have already committed crime do the executions? Yeah. Because they're already, both of them have already committed murders. I don't understand how that person they... that's then murdered someone in prison then gets another life sentence for murdering someone. Isn't the person who does the lethal injection a doctor? Yeah, but if a doctor gave you a lethal injection on a normal day, it'd be murder. Yeah. So what's the difference? The time's up. I don't know. <laughs> But do you see what I mean? Yeah. Why is it okay sometimes and not others? That's the whole argument for the death penalty. <laughs> I just don't get it. And I don't get then, like like I said, if it was a box standard murderer killing another murderer, why did they get another life sentence? Especially as well if that murderer was the one that got murdered was given a death sentence because they were going to be killed anyway. Because they're still taking a life. Yeah, but they were going to be killed anyway. I don't know, what are the people in charge? <laughs> I just don't get it. It's I don't n- get why an executioner doesn't get given murder. But a, if a murderer murders a murderer, they're again a murderer. I don't get it. Because regardless of how you look at it, they're still taking someone's life, whether they're paid to do it or not. Because if they're paid to do it, effectively they're an assassin. Yeah. Well, hitman. Yeah, and Hitman's, depending on what country he's come from, can still be prosecuted. So why can't the executioner be prosecuted? Because it's agreed upon that the executioner, yeah, but so the doctor... Hitman, it's agreed by a group of people that they're going to kill someone. <laughs> the people who make the law <laughs> are saying that this person is going to be put to death. Probably by a doctor. Mm. Does it think... make it right? Yeah, I just I don't see the difference. I don't get it. It's not. There's, there's no difference in it. Which is the whole Just argument. Just you can get paid for. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe then, if you want to murder someone, instead of just going out and murdering someone... Become a doctor. Yeah, who could administer lethal injections and that way you get to kill people. I wonder if people that do get to do it do actually have a taste for murder. And they've, they've hidden it well in... Ah, actually, is that a clause in it? What if you do want to go around murdering people and the way you get around it is becoming an executioner? I think if you are very open Isn't about it? wanting to kill someone, you may be seen as a psychiatrist. No, but if they're really that clever at it, they'd hide it. And then no, that if they way, hide they're it... Into, they're getting a kick out of killing these people. No, if they hide it, then we won't know about them. But that's what I'm saying. They're still technically murdering people. They're getting a kick out of it. So maybe... Maybe they are. They went in with the intention. So even though, so yeah, so what if the execution of their original intention, it, even though it might have not been that person, it was premeditated. They want to murder people, so they became a doctor, so they could administer a lethal injection. Are they not a murderer? They technically are, because they premeditated. They've done. They've gone for that job deliberately, so they can kill people. You can't prove it. No, you can't. But technically, they are still a murderer. So yeah. why aren't they given a life sentence? <laughs> They're still a murderer. Yes. There's the whole thing. I this is why I do. If you take a life, you are a murderer. But yeah, I just yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's all yeah. No one should kill anyone. No, that's really really stupid. <laughs> Even then, don't kill anyone. Or accept candy from your dad on Halloween. No, they're they're the important lessons for the day's kids. <laughs> Don't kill anyone at all, Amelia. And don't take candy from your dad. Yeah. 
Imagine if your dad gives you some candy. You're like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Give it a die. Especially if it tastes funny. Yeah. But well, then it's too late anyway. So. Yeah. That's how you die. Oh, is that my stupid death? <laughs> yeah. That was from a different episode. But yeah, that's how you die. <laughs> You'll have to listen to Patreon to find out that episode. Mm. We're talking about how I'm going to die a stupid death. So. And it was Amelia's dad. We figured it out. Yeah. What, did he push me and I slipped on a pebble? <laughs> <laughs> well, listeners will have to find out on Patreon, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, no. We've got massively... Well, it's not for tangent because we were talking about murder. But still. You've learned a few important life lessons today. <laughs> <laughs> So on that note, on that note, keep creeping and we'll keep digging.